In our solar system, everything is perfectly ordered so that life can exist. The planets revolve around the sun in well-defined orbits, and none move out of place to collide with others. Thanks to this, the Earth has its place in the habitable zone around the sun, where temperatures have allowed water to remain in a liquid state and living beings to emerge. However, there are many objects out there that endanger this order. What would happen if something broke the solar system's stability one day by knocking the planets out of their orbits? What would happen if an astronomical event like the approach of a star ejected the Earth out of the solar system? Earth Orbit Throughout history, humanity has never experienced a change in the Earth's natural cycles. We know that after each night, the sun will rise again the next day, and we know that the moon will always be there, even if we do not see it. We know there will always be seasons thanks to Earth's orbit around the sun. Everything has always been like this, at least throughout the history of humanity. But astronomical events outside our planet put these cycles and this order that have prevailed for millions of years at risk. Is it possible for the Earth to go out of its orbit? The Earth's orbit around the Sun originated during the formation of our planet 4.5 billion years ago. The accretion disk that gave rise to Earth placed our planet in that position and it just happened that all the necessary conditions for life were found right in that area. Since the Earth was formed, that orbit has not changed, or rather it has not changed much, thanks to which all the ecosystems we know of and all the forms of life that this planet has had could be developed. But just because the Earth hasn't slipped out of its orbit in history doesn't mean it never will. In the universe, gravity causes all objects to rotate, with the largest and most massive objects attracting the smallest and least massive. For this reason, the moons orbit around the planets and the planets revolve around the Sun. Since the natural satellites are small and have little mass, they revolve around the more giant planets and have more mass, and in turn, they orbit the Sun, which has 99% of all the mass in the solar system. All this in a perfect balance in which objects with less mass orbit those with more mass. What kind of event could cause the Earth to be completely ejected from the solar system? There are two ways in which the Earth could leave the solar system. The first by accident and the second by doing it intentionally. Let's talk about the first scenario. In our solar system, there are objects such as asteroids and comets which could hit Earth and move it a bit out of its orbit if they hit Earth. But these objects are much smaller than our planet, so by themselves they could not take Earth out of the solar system. The only way Earth could be accidentally kicked out of the solar system is if a star other than the Sun came too close to our planet and pushed it towards the solar system's outer reaches with its strong gravitational force. But could something like that be possible? Twin Stars In a past video, we talked about Nemesis, the possible twin sister of the Sun. If you have not seen the video, We'll leave it here. In this video, we explain that there is a theory that says that the Sun may have a twin star with the same size and mass hovering near the solar system's edge. However, there is another way that a star could interfere with Earth's orbit. Some time ago, a theory arose that approximately 70,000 years ago, a binary system made up of a red dwarf and a brown dwarf passed very close to the Oort cloud that surrounds the solar system. Let's remember that the Oort Cloud is an asteroid belt that surrounds the entire solar system and is located at the limits where the solar system ends and the interstellar medium begins. The theory tells us that it is likely that this binary system passed so close to the Oort Cloud that its gravity pulled all the objects that were nearby, disturbing the order and orbits of comets and asteroids in the area, sending some of them to the inner solar system and causing a few to crash into the Earth. Although this theory is still up for debate in the scientific community, another star is headed our way. It is Gali 710, a red dwarf star with about half the mass of the Sun. According to calculations, it is estimated that in 1.2 million years, the star will be able to enter the Oort cloud of our solar system, becoming the closest star to the Sun and the brighter star in the night sky. If this happens, Gali 710 will disturb the orbit of millions of comets and asteroids in the Oort cloud. Even planets could leave their orbits, triggering a new period of planetary bombardment similar to the solar system's origins when comets and asteroids were falling non-stop, impacting the planets and causing mass extinctions. 
Although the most conservative calculations indicate that even if Gali 710 disturbs the Oort cloud, its effects will not be felt on the inner planets. Even so, as we see, a star can get much closer and head directly into the inner solar system instead of just passing by. The probability of another star colliding with the Sun is astronomically unlikely, but it should worry us that it passes too close to Earth since it could quickly eject our tiny planet from the solar system. Although this scenario is almost unlikely, what would happen if another star accidentally expelled the Earth from the solar system? To begin with, we must remember that any star headed towards the interior of the solar system would be visible thousands of years before that event occurred. So, for humanity, it would take generations until we finally see that there are two suns in the sky. Humans of the future would see the sky very differently from how we see it. The new star would appear brighter than the moon and could be seen even during the daytime. This would cause changes in the seasons and it is possible that for some time the Earth would be hotter. But then when this star begins to move away and leave the solar system, its gravity would drag some planets with it, including the Earth. Due to the gravitational pull, the Earth would be expelled from the solar system, moving away little by little while the Sun gets smaller and smaller in the sky. At first, the effects would not be noticeable, but the Earth would become colder and colder over the years. When Earth crosses the orbit of Mars, the global temperature will drop to 58 degrees Fahrenheit. As the day grows darker, eternal winter will set in, and the polar ice caps will grow and extend to the equator, covering the entire Earth while planets wither and die, forests will freeze. Also, the animals will freeze to death with no chance of survival. The trophic chain will break, and all living beings will do their best to survive, but none will make it. The largest will be the first to die, but as the planets wither due to the cold and lack of sunlight, eventually smaller animals will die. When Earth crosses Jupiter's orbit, the surface temperature will have dropped to minus 238 degrees Fahrenheit. By then, almost all will be dead. Without the sun's energy to evaporate, the water clouds will not form, and the water cycle will stop. Polar ice caps will cover the entire planet, and the ocean will be covered by a thick layer of ice. The planet will go from our green and blue home to a white snow globe. The more heat dissipates, the more water will freeze. Beneath the ice sheets, the salt concentration in the abyssal depths will grow and poison most surviving animals. However, near the fumaroles of submarine volcanoes, some organisms known as extremophiles could adapt to such circumstances and survive in the dark by taking advantage of the Earth's internal heat. As the Earth reaches the orbit of Pluto and the Kuiper Belt, the Sun will continue to be the brightest star in the sky, but it will no longer be different from the others. At this distance, temperatures at the Earth's surface will drop to minus 398 degrees Fahrenheit which will cause the gases in the atmosphere to freeze, thus ending any form of life that may have remained. As the Earth leaves the solar system, the atmosphere will freeze and fall as snow, accumulating in a layer 10 meters thick, and beneath it will be the remains of all living things that have ever inhabited the planet. The End Once the Earth becomes a wandering planet, Life will cease to exist unless that humanity has been able to prepare well in advance, making all the preparations to survive even under these extreme conditions. This is where the second option we discussed comes in. Make intentionally the Earth leave the solar system. Chinese writer Sixin Lu proposes this idea in the novel The Wandering Earth. Sixin Lu proposes to move the entire planet with gigantic motors the size of cities powered by nuclear fusion power. These vast engines can move the entire Earth and direct it towards a new star when the Sun begins to die. While this idea is somewhat revolutionary, the same concept could be used to move Earth or reposition it in its orbit around the Sun if a star ejected it from the solar system. Although for the case that concerns us, it would not be necessary to use planetary engines like the ones in the novel since it would be enough to move massive bodies within our solar system and use them to move the Earth with a method known as a gravitational drag. Gravitational drag involves using one object's gravitational field to change another's direction or speed. This idea was proposed to defend against asteroids heading towards Earth, but also could be used to move Earth. The method consists in that if we place an object with a certain mass near another in space, the gravity of the first will alter the orbit of the second, 
modifying its orbit around the Sun, that is, changing its direction and speed just because it is close. In this method, both bodies do not need to be in contact. They just have to be placed close to each other in a strategic position that changes their orbit in the direction we want. To change the direction of the Earth, what we would have to do is move other smaller bodies such as asteroids and then use these asteroids to move other larger objects such as the moons of Jupiter and finally use these moons to modify the orbit of the Earth. This is what is known as planetary dominoes. Since different bodies are used, starting with a small one, to move a huge one finally. In this way, moving a few asteroids could change a planet's direction. If we knew that a massive star would change our planet's orbit in a thousand years, we could prepare ourselves using all the technology at our disposal and anticipate this. Moving the entire planet towards a position in which no star could put at risk to humanity. Similarly, if we find out too late and a star manages to knock Earth out of its orbit, we could use this method to return our planet to its original orbit. It's not necessary to leave everything to chance since we have science and human intelligence that can help us preserve life on Earth and save us from any threat that comes our way. This reminds us that even in the worst case scenario, humanity will always find a way to get ahead, overcome any challenge, and move towards a better future for all living beings.